Welcome back everyone. I'm sorry it's been so long since the last posting but uh, many things have been happening here in Scotland. Most important is of course we're coming into winter and uh, the number of sunny days are much fewer, a lot of rain and uh, a lot of um, uh, cloudy days. But at any rate, today we had a lovely, a lovely sunny day and we were able to get out. Now, I'm going to go back over one of the things which I've done before, and that is the existential fear of death. I think it's enormously important that we understand it. But what I'm going to do is to tell you how to stop it so that you're no longer afraid of death so that you don't have this hidden anxiety in you which is causing a change in behavior. So uh, let's then start by asking the question, what is existential fear? There we have it, death. Yes, uh, it has a fantastic effect on us. Existential fear of death is amazing, but you can say many people talk about death, but do they talk about them dying themselves? You will die, and that is very important to come to terms with. You see, I mean you. Now, all of you who are watching this will have had uh, induced in you significant existential fear, a fear of death. There are uh, one or two wonderful books on this. Now, I've been through all this before, but we've got a new ending to it, which is important. Uh, the Road of Death in Life uh, the Worm at the Core, and it's an, an excellent book on existential anxiety. Uh, it would certainly be worth buying and reading, particularly as we all have to learn how to come to terms with this. You see, we forget about the importance of existential death anxiety and how it can change our behaviour, and so we don't worry about it, but it's there changing things. I like this e experiment. Uh, I have told you about it before, but uh, it was by Sheldon, Solomon and co-workers, and they formed two groups of people who were selected by questionnaire to be have the same personality, but note they were all judges. One half was given the questionnaire, the other had an additional question. How long do you think you will live? And the clock is striking, of course, the time that they won't. So they were asked the second question. How long do you think you will live? Both groups were asked to judge a minor crime, a prostitute found working the streets. OK, so they're judges. The average fine for that crime at the time was £50. That was the baseline. In the first group, where the judges were not asked to think about their mortality, they set an average fine of £50. But the group who had been asked about their mortality first set a fine that was nine times higher, 450. And what's amazing about this are two things. One is the judges are supposedly trained to administer the law evenly and rationally, but they couldn't because their existential fear of death had been activated. So never go into court and remind the judge he's going to die. Secondly, when the experiment was explained to them, the second group all said, no way, your stupid little questionnaire could have had any effect on my behavior, but it did. And again, uh, there's another paper which came out in 2013, and 
uh, this showed that activity in the right and left insula uh, which are two structures in the brain they're the blue ones there in the picture uh, decreased with higher death anxiety scores so you get in fact insular change so this is a very real phenomenon and we need to do something about it because existential anxiety um, whenever people are reminded of death they love people who share their beliefs they hate people who are different they sit closer to people who share their beliefs they sit further away from anyone who looks different this makes you think about the current time and if we give such people in laboratory setting an opportunity to physically harm someone who's different they become much more hostile and vicious they choose charismatic leaders any comments on that this could be seen at the present time in our society so existential fear of death is very important but is there a way round this? This is what we want to know. And this is the new bit to the talk. In Bhutan, Bhutan is a state uh, which is just at the end of Nepal and shelters under the mountain, southern slopes of the mountain range of the Himalayas. And they are quite immured to death because unlike many of us in the West, the Butamese don't hide from death. And images of death are everywhere, especially in Buddhist iconography, where you'll find colorful, gruesome illustrations. No one, not even children, are sheltered from these images or from the ritual dances reenacting death. That they're going to die is made very clear to everybody in Bhutan. They say the five remembers, reminders of death a day leads to happiness. In other words, leads to you conquering your existential fear of death. Now, you might be interested that uh, an app for your telephone, uh, you can get it at the app store if you use iPhone, which I do. And it's called We Croak. And you get five reminders of death a day it's a telephone it, as I say it's a telephone app so do get it and if you're interested in this we croak it's a handbook for being temporary I love that actually a handbook for being temporary because we're all temporary uh, by Hansa Bergwell you might like to get that as well so we can ask our first question again does ignoring death have consequences for us? And the Dalai Lama says definitely. Those who reject death suffer from a false sense of permanence, become more greedy, become more self-serving and lustful, have more enemies, become attached to my wealth, my health, my friends, my enemy and my family. So clearly it structures our society. Does it have to be like this? Can we change? And if so, how do we change? Well, I've now told you. Get hold of this app and remind yourself about death. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I've injections of um, immunity against uh, the existential fear of death every day. Uh, I started using it and I could spot in myself uh, on the first three or four days that when I read about death, yes, there was in me still hidden anxiety about it, which I could never have got at before. But at any rate, as the days go on and you, in fact, uh, have more exposure to, uh, to your own death, more exposure to uh, really the amount of death which is around us uh, in society and which because of COVID-19 and which feeds back onto us again raising our level of existential fear of death and I've shown you it changes brain function and I've shown you, shown you how it can change judgments which we make so uh, 
have a go at the app if you want to. You, the simple app is free. Uh, if you want more uh, more complex quotes or quotes more often, then you have to pay for it. But the first one is free, so you can, in fact, then learn to be free of existential fear of death. And that, I think, for all of us, is very important. Okay, thanks so much. We'll see you next time.